My name is Dean Burnell, and I've worked with wild dolphins my whole life, especially lone sociable dolphins of the world, the ones that interact with humans. One dolphin in particular, by the name of Jojo, has inspired me. I believe he is one of the most remarkable dolphins in the world. He has a personality as intriguing as any human, and I consider him a close friend. I've spent a lot of time treating him when he's been injured, and sometimes his injuries are quite severe. In some places, dolphins aren't so lucky. I'm in Japan, in a place called the Izu Peninsula, a port by the name of Futo. It's a place that's been at odds with the world because of the drastic kills of dolphins by the fishermen who live here. It's a place where fishermen drive dolphins into the bay. A handful of them are captured alive, and the rest are slaughtered. Things are quiet now in Port Fudo. As I walk along the boats, my fear is that I'm gonna witness another dolphin kill. Every time a smaller pilot boat goes out, I wonder, did they get a sighting of dolphins? And are all the fishermen gonna come running down and getting their boats and net them? I can still remember the peculiar sound of hammering, where the fishermen would put metal poles into the water and bang on them to confuse the dolphin's sonar as they drive them into the nets. I've spent most of my life keeping one dolphin alive, and here, entire dolphin families are being killed. The first time I witnessed a dolphin slaughter, I felt absolutely helpless. I was in another country where the fishermen wouldn't understand why I would protect a wild dolphin. In Japan, this was just another fishery. Dolphins were dragged up this hill and slaughtered, seemingly without anyone thinking they were intelligent mammals who would suffer intense pain. I could see where everything took place. It's like I was there yesterday. I see the same trucks, the same tools, the knives that kill the dolphins. I could even see the boards that listed the boats that captured them. I walk outside and I could see the pipes that were gushing with blood. It was like a sea of red there were so many dolphins slaughtered. It's strange to be in a place where so much suffering had taken place. Before I left for Japan, a Native American shaman had me go to the desert in a specific area where I could find some very rare white sage. When he came back, he told me to take it to Port Futo and burn the white sage to release the souls of the dolphins. I believe the shaman understood that every one of these dolphins were like Jojo. Throughout history, dolphins have taken an active interest in our lives with documented cases of rescuing humans. And this is the way we're treating them? I know dolphin slaughters have decreased from mounting international pressure and the shrinking demand for dolphin meat but the practice of killing these animals in Japan has now been linked to the increasing demand for live dolphins. Dolphins are more popular than ever, as reflected in the growing number of dolphin facilities worldwide. Faced with shrinking revenues, the fishermen of Port Futo were quick to seize the opportunity to adapt their practices. Dolphins are now routinely captured and sold to facilities in Asia and Latin America at an astounding profit. But some fishermen supplement their income by netting scores of animals and slaughtering the majority of the catch. 
I say supplement because the majority of income is derived from the handful of live animals. To put it another way, they already have their money. They've already been paid for the few dolphins that they needed for captivity. They could let the rest go, but instead they slaughter them because traditionally they've killed dolphins. This is especially absurd when one considers that dolphin meat is now so contaminated with pollutants, it is unsafe for human consumption. As strong indicators of the health of our oceans, dolphins are warning us about our own possible fate. As with so many stories, this one contains lessons both subtle and dramatic. I can't help but think how I would respond to the threat of capture to my own family. Perhaps it would be no different than what I've seen dolphins do. When one dolphin escapes, it leaves a net, but instead of running, the dolphin comes back to the cries of the other dolphins that are getting slaughtered and entangled in the nets. Most likely he won't make it out if he stays. I hadn't spoken to any of the Japanese fishermen. It was like they were from another time and place. I never thought I'd be returning to Port Futo at the invitation of a fisherman who wanted to meet me. But this was the reason for my visit. His name is Aizumi Ishii, and his boat is moored right next to the master dolphin hunting boat. Ishii knew who I was, and he knew I'd spent a lifetime with the wild dolphin. In his life, he had treated dolphins very differently. So he was intrigued that someone could have such an intimate relationship with the wild dolphin. I realized that since Ishii was a little boy, he had witnessed dolphin kills. Now Ishii is the only fisherman in Port Futo who started running environmental trips, dolphin watching trips, instead of dolphin hunting trips. I gave Ishii the Jojo sticker, which signifies that a boat is engaged in environmental programs. Ishii has the only sticker that's outside of the Turks and Caicos Islands where Jojo lives. Ishii's very proud to display the sticker, and he put it right where the harbor master would see it. I think Ishii having a greater understanding of Jojo really helps. He understands that these dolphins have personalities and that he himself could probably have a relationship with them. But he also understands that they're very intimate animals. They're not that much different than we are. It was a very strange moment when Ishii brought out his dolphin kill knife. The knife was well used. His father is the one that made it for him. The handle is specifically shaped for Ishii's left hand. But his father also taught him that dolphins are special animals. They're not fish. Ishii's father is the one who taught him to be a little bit different from the rest of the fishermen. Somebody who would probably change the history of dolphin kills. Ishii had explained to the public and to the press in a very bold statement that when the fishermen cut the dolphins' throats, the dolphins would cry. Ishii told the audience that he realized that dolphins do have emotions and they do feel pain. When Ishii handed me the knife, the first thing I felt I had to do was bless the knife so that it would never kill again. But during that time, Ishii had said something in Japanese and I didn't know what he had said. The translator and the camera crew were so moved by his words. I saw many camera flashes and I knew something very significant had happened, but I didn't know what. There was a long pause as the translator wiped away her tears and waited for the murmurs of the camera crew and the photographers to subside. The translator then told me that Ishii had presented his knife as a gift to me. I was so surprised because she had also said that he disarms himself from this knife and he's giving it to me 
knowing that it would never kill a dolphin again. This was a great sacrifice for Ishii. He even said that he felt completely vulnerable without his knife. Presenting a family heirloom, something of great cultural significance, to somebody from another country was an unprecedented gesture. I know I had a huge responsibility to do the right thing by accepting the knife and his disarmament with great honor. Look at the expression on these children's faces when they see dolphins. We just showed them the whole video of Jojo, the same story that inspired Ishii. And look at the happiness and the joy in these children, the excitement of just being able to see a dolphin now. I'm sure they're all going to be on Ishii's boat. Ishii's got a great mission in front of him, but he's not only a teacher for the children. Having put his heritage and his future at risk, he has become a role model for a culture in change. New friendships like ours that forge bridges across cultures are the greatest lessons we can offer to our children. My responsibility is to ensure that that knife remains a symbol of change for all people. It represents the healing of many years of conflict that took place between people of different cultures and different views.